<laughs> Where's his face gone? Well, that one fing off too! <laughs> you got one spare left? Two. Two? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not a good day on the fing shark if your grills look like that. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Coffee's done. You gonna bring your dogs? <laughs> what is it? Sunscreen? Yeah. Oh man. It makes you smell like you're in Hawaii. It does like smell like not. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Petrol and meth. Like G'day crew, welcome to this aquatic rehab spearfishing vlog. Now, this video features three fairly lazy dives down in Coromandel with my mate Wayne. Uh, you'll notice Wayne here using one fin because he lost his leg during quite a nasty work accident and um, he's still going hard as. But um, yeah, this first dive here we go out with is Mrs. Holly and we'll get straight into it. What do you reckon? 20 metres. Mm. 20 metres. So yeah, for this first dive of the day, we're checking out a rock that I've never actually dived before. Uh, basically the usual, straight down to the top of the rock, get a kinner and throw it up current to see if there's any fish hanging around. Uh, quite often that'll bring in bait, kingfish, snapper and stuff like that. Yeah, basically do that and then what I want to do is dive down in underneath the kelp where the kinner has sunk. Uh, that allows me to hide from any snapper that may be coming in to have a look at those kinna. Otherwise dropping down on them can be quite difficult in really clean water. Uh, fairly dead, not that much bait, only a few panties, nothing really worth shooting. So um, basically what I do is I'm coming back up the reef looking in the cracks for crayfish. And I notice this massive scorpion fish. Depower the gun to sort of minimise the damage to the shaft and smoke it. Now these guys sometimes get the nickname poor man's lobster because they're quite good eating. Uh, the problem is they've got a toxic uh, venom in the spines and they're sort of in that lionfish, stonefish kind of family. Um, I hadn't been done before until this fish and then lifted it out of the water assuming it was stuck on the flopper, had it sink down and had spines go through my uh, hand and one through my thumbnail. Look at the size of this. You're big. Oh, it spiked me. Yeah, you spiked me, eh? Yeah. You spiked me quite badly on the finger. It hurts. Just under the gill. Just watch the ears. Now, back at the pressure point with Wayne, uh, with my glove off being a bit of a bitch, just trying to cool the, the hand down. Um, if I had to rate the pain, it would probably be about 60% of the pelvic spines on those unicorn fish you get in the tropics. Um, some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. And here's a size comparison with my hand. So you can see it's quite a big scorp. So with the lack of current and bait uh, on all the spots, we decided to go and just check this prey hole that had a nice big pack in it the week before. Uh, no one home. Yeah, so it was so dead we just thought we were going to go back in towards the coast a bit closer, see if there was any fish hanging out in there. So yeah, straight back in to beautiful clean water and uh, me and Wayne find some quite good sign up on the front of this little weed edge here where the current was coming on to. Uh, you can see Kohiro there, that's a good sign, and uh, Blue Mau Mau. Uh, I actually flicked the camera off to save battery and a John Dory appeared in my left hand and um, he was trying to make a run for it. Now as you can see a school of kingies has come in with the commotion. Uh, that's exactly where I'd expect them to be, right up on that front where the current's coming on there and all the bait are hanging out, or not too far away. Uh, the John Dory grunt is kind of almost what we mimic when we're trying to pull kingfish in as well. 
but the John Dory actually do a real good job of it, like you can feel it the whole way through your chest. here I dive down and it's nice John Dory down there so I added that to the scorpion fish and I got probably some of the best tasting fish in the industry. Big Dory. Big so yeah after that decided to move spots again and um, back into some more nice clean water straight back down on the weed line and a couple of friendly blue moki so me and Wayne decided to take one each now something quite interesting here red is quite a weak uh, wavelength on the EM spectrum so red has the most trouble penetrating down through water uh, an interesting sort of side effect of that here is you can see that the fish's blood instead of being red it actually kind of looks almost green and uh, you notice it a lot more in person than you do on the camera but it's pretty cool anyway just got a blue moke egg so another little not so common in the north of but yeah not too bad in the pan 15 more meters up the weed line there's a nice bory hanging out under a kelp overhang so Wayne shoots it in the head and again here you can see the commotion from a fighting fish brings in a school of kingfish uh, they're all keen to just have a look at what's going on and see if they can sort of get a feed out of the situation Picked a boar fish there, another bloody good eating fish. So yeah, as Wayne's dealing with the bory, I dive down into the school of kingfish and uh, just see if there's anything worth shooting at. This time of year, my freezer's looking pretty good with fish, so my bloodlust isn't really that high. Um, there's a pack of about 15 kilo sort of fish closer to me, and then uh, up around the 20, a bit further away. Uh, none of the 20s showed themselves, so yeah, I was half tempted by this one, but just ended up leaving them. Had enough called the dive and uh, decided to make a plan with Wayne to do a dive about a week later. There. Uh, that's about 53 and a half roughly. Well look at the meat on it. Fuck. Um, another, that's I don't know, probably my favourite eating species in the world so far that I've tried. And skin's all edible too so it's just beautiful. Um, now I don't have scales so I just measured the scorpion in case anyone uh, wanted to compare it to one they've shot in the future. I think it was 53 and a half centimeters and uh, yeah nice filleting session. I like to take the fillets off my dory because I've got young kids otherwise I'd do them whole Luxury. but uh, yeah can't moan. So back out with Wayne again, this is a couple of days diving, just a quick Arvo dive and then we had a dive lined up for the next day. Um, straight back into that real nice clean water, straight away see something interesting down on the sand and it looks like a cray molt 
and then we have a few crazes lurking around this one in here is sort of probably just legal but um, this spot kind of gets hammered so just leave them uh, after that I shoot a Kohiro for a bit of chum off camera and make a really bad screw up so this clearly quite skitterish boarfish is bolted over from Wayne at 100 mile an hour and parked up underneath me now I've reloaded the gun but I haven't rigged it because I thought I could just hold the Dyneema in my left hand um, you can see the Dyneema is looping around the rubber and what that does is it causes uh, a bunch up that catches at the muzzle when you shoot and pulls on the spear uh, in this case pulling the spear downward and making for a real awful shot so make a terrible shot basically um, after a pretty big excuse there and um, look up at Wayne and I've tried to say it needs a second shot by doing the almost the peace sign um, but in reality he thought there was two bullfish so my one gets away, runs away, he thinks that that's a separate bory and goes over and somehow manages to peel it. Yeah. No, it's that first there. That was the same one? Yeah, yeah, it just come over here and it was f***ing <laughs> there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just made a real bad shot on the bory and luckily it was slow enough to hang around. It ripped off and then Wayne dived down and shot it, so we got it. So yep, after that we went about 20 more meters up the reef and I spotted another one just chilling out here on the weed edge. We've got two boreys and uh, we've seen one okay kingy hanging around. So yeah, one thing about boarfish is they can be quite vulnerable to sparrows during the breeding season, which is the warmer months. Um, they sort of come up into the shallows there, and some days you can see sort of upwards of a dozen to even 30 plus fish. Um, if you do see them like that, I'd probably recommend just taking enough for a feed and letting them do their thing. Yeah, everything here's a little bit shy. That's all right. So yeah, playing cat and mouse with a couple of nice kingfish here and just can't get them within shot range. Um, this can be quite typical behaviour sort of as uh, the heat peaks towards the end of summer. Um, I find when it's a bit cooler the kingies are a lot more friendly. But uh, yeah, getting a little bit frustrated here. However the weed line is sort of showing quite a lot of good sign that you'd usually look for. Um, schools of Trevally here and lots of demoiselles hanging up on these um, little weedy sort of points. Um, old red mochi that's probably going to be cray or bronzy food quite shortly. So yeah, not bad for an hour in the water and um, decided to call it and get back in tomorrow. Now Wayne sort of stitched us up here. The only water they brought out on the boat was that sparkling water and uh, yeah, you can see he wasn't really too into it. So pretty calm morning, just here getting our salt ice and then uh, a coffee and then we're heading over back to Tyro, going to launch and probably have a look at Castle Island I think. Oh, ice King. <laughs> this is probably triple dose. Limited to five meters. <laughs> So as soon as me and Wayne get in, uh, epic schools of slimy mackerel in really nice clean water. Now these slimies, I don't often see them where I usually dive, so they can be quite a good sign. Nice big fat bait fish. And uh, yeah, had a look at them and then continued up to the pressure point. Big beautiful schools of mackerel, slimy mackerel. 
So me and Wayne keep making our way around to the pressure point um, up in the swell and I do a dive here and count about a dozen bronzies, juvie bronzies making their way into me and I'm like right okay. So there's a school of about 12 bronzies below us, no, just juvie so let's see if we can get some footage of them. So yeah we moved up a little bit further and I just took another dive here just to see what was going on and um, the sharks are quite hard to see because they're so good at reflecting the water around them but um, I counted at least 20 in this little bit of footage and me and Wayne are sitting there thinking are we even going to be able to land anything? Um, we've had it in the past where you get schools of juvie bronzies and you shoot a kingfish and you'll end up with 30 sharks on the surface just going nuts. But being juvies they can be quite dopey so it sort of takes them a little while to figure out what's going on. So our job's basically just to gauge them. <laughs> I saw that kingfish before! I yeah. Yeah. 26 sharks. Now, when Wayne said that he'd counted about 26 along the wall below him, I thought, I'm kind of lucky that I've got the big camera on the boat. So let's swim back and grab that and try to get a bit of footage. Now, before we did that, Wayne just decided to put a shaft in a car wide to test the reactions from the sharks to see if we were likely to get away with shooting a kingy. And the sharks were on. Some days they're not, some days they are. And these ones decided to ball up and take his spear shaft as a souvenir. Two school of bronzies. So we're going to get the big camera out and uh, park the boat over there and see if we can get some footage and maybe some photographs. Did you see when I tried to, went out to shoot that car wire? And then I changed my mind. So I turned around and looked and there was like gonna eight or ten of them balling on the front of that rock. I was like, nah. This car look like they've been twisted. So yeah, not what I would consider good hunting, but um, quite a nice scenic dive. Uh, a lot of scratched up kawaii, obviously the bronzies, big koeys, pinkies down the bottom there, slimy max, big schools of rat kingies which is always quite cool to see, the younger generation, uh, this animal, and yeah, just cool to be able to get that big camera out and get a good bit of uh, content and stuff to play with when I get back home. Yeah, I was actually having a nice peaceful dive until Wayne decided to peel out another two kawaii in one shot. And uh, yeah, all the bronzies back in again up on the surface, just um, quite clueless. But a few of them got the hang of it and they were ripping the, uh, the kawaii to bits on the spear and ended up taking that spear off Wayne as well. Wayne shot two kawaii in one shot, the sharks were right on him. I don't think I got most of it on film, but there was like 10 of them right on us. Turned the GoPro on a little bit late, but... <laughs> Where's the spears gone? <laughs> one off too. <laughs> you got one spear left? Two. Two. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not a good day on the like that. Yeah, that's right. Now this is part of the reason why we run Dyneema straight to our spears. We don't have brakes on the line, we don't have mono that can have a horrible memory when fish are twisting, don't have crimps and things like that. It's just a simple Dyneema straight to your spear with a bowline and um, it just means you can bring spear spears out and replace them as needed. So yeah, after a wee while we'd had enough with the sharks, decided to go back to the weed lines for a quick look. Um, I just shot myself a Kohiru for the pan and couldn't be bothered to get my blade out. Now back in on the same weed line as the day before, just to have a bit of a look. Back down on the same spot where the kingies were too, and there's another pair of quite timid kingfish. You can see here that I'm just doing light grunting and being really non-threatening. Uh, the fish aren't responding very well, but so many videos I see guys doing like crazy amounts of grunting. It's a very uh, sporadic technique you want to use to um, just try to pique the curiosity. You don't have to grunt if the fish are close to you, it's something you do to try to turn them or bring them in. Uh, quite a nice sized kingy came past me and I thought I wasn't really paying attention to it until a bit too late. And it was actually quite a nice fish and then it wouldn't come back. I had a little one with it but 
Yeah, definitely would have shot, shot that one if I could. Now the weed line was quite dead so I ended up doing a bit of work on these kelp patches a bit off the weed line and found this bory just hanging out by itself. Switched it off, and I've just seen another one here. Did you see it there? I'm trying to get Wayne to shoot it, but it just ran away. So, yeah, climb back on the boat. I'm done for the day. Pretty cooked and dehydrated. End up contaminating my fish in Wayne's boxes before getting it on ice. in from the other one. Oh yeah, well, there's plenty of rain. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately for boar fish, their flesh is absolutely unreal. Yeah, it's kind of going to be going to be their downfall in terms of sparrows, so that's why I sort of say, you know, if you really see lots of them, try to protect them, try to encourage other sparrows to not to go too hard on them either. Um, you know, two or three is enough rather than death piles of them. See you later. Catch up. Now, yeah, headed back to Auckland. The next day, what I did is basically, I left them in a uh, deep roasted sesame seed sauce, a Japanese one that's really light. Fry them up in the cast iron pan with coconut oil. Basically just chucked a little bit of panko crumb on it just for a little bit of, I don't know, almost pointless. Yeah, just eat it like that, carnivore breakfast. Quite often that's what I do with my deer and my fish in the morning, no carbs. So yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this style over my usual narration in front of the camera. Um, I found this a ton easier, so if you do like it, feel free to let me know. And feel free to like and subscribe too for more videos, and we'll catch you on the next one.